share a few things uh, which I have experienced over my 8-9 years of doing business here in Nepal uh, by sharing few stories with you which is which you would have heard which you would have learned if the children or you know your parents would have uh, told you the first is called paint the world green now there was this uh, this very big millionaire lots of money but he had an eye sword his eyes were hurting he couldn't see anything he was in tremendous pain so he went to various doctors he went to physicians he went to ophthalmologists he went everywhere possible he took lots of medicine injections pills but you know nothing nothing helped him he still was suffering there was a lot of pain so you know he he couldn't figure out what to do somebody suggested there is this really old monk who can help you so he got a hold of this old monk asked him to come over uh, to his house and get rid of the pain <coughs> the monk came by heard the millionaire out what is his problem and told him oh ah i know what the, what, what is your problem you know i know what what's wrong with you you should not see the color green the problem with you is you should only see the color green that's all <coughs> The other colors around you are distracting your eyes and that's why it's causing an eyesore. Okay, well and good. So, he said this and the monk left. Now the millionaire, the millionaire that he was, he said, um, I need everything to be painted green. The walls painted green, the ceiling painted green, the staff clothes changed to green. So, wherever I could lay my eye on should be green. He instructed his staff and servants. So they went around painting everything green, you know, got pocket loads of paint, splashed it all over. So after a couple of days, this mom came by to check if the millionaire is okay or not. So as he entered the house, three, four servants came by and splashed green paint on him. <laughs> he was amazed, he was angry, he was horrified. What are you doing? So the, monk, the servants told monk, ki, you know, you know, it was you who told our master that he should only see green and you are wearing orange. If you go in front, lest you go in front of our master and his eyesore is not improved, you know, it will be a big problem. Hearing this, the monk laughed. He went to the millionaire and he said, what have you done? I asked you to see green, but it, I didn't ask you to paint the entire town green. You could have simply bought a pair of green glasses <laughs> and seen green. So, common sense is the most important skill set that you need outside the world. You know, it's very easy, everybody has it, but we don't apply it. So, common sense is very important in the outside world. Why is it important? Don't waste your father's money. Apply common sense. Do the work in the minimum possible cost. It can only be done if you apply your mind. That's the reason I shared this story. It's funny. It's very childish maybe. But I found this story very, very relevant to what I had to say about common sense. What should we take away from, uh, from this story is, let us change our vision and the world will appear accordingly. It is foolish to shape the world. Let's shape ourselves. Right? So, in the world outside, you cannot go changing your boss, your juniors, your father. I know it's difficult. There's a generation gap. Those people who are joining your father's business, he's not going to change for you. He's definitely not going to change for you. He's been like that for 40, 50 years. It's you and me who need to change. And if we change, the world around, with, around us will change. So, the second skill set that I want to talk to you about Back in the US and in the, in the world outside, there is generally farmer's market and once a year there is an award giving competition. So you know there's competition, a lot of food products go in for award and the, there is award given for the best crop. So there was this farmer who used to grow corn. You know what corn is? Makai. So he used to grow makai and uh, he won the best award for best corn each year. He used to get awarded for having making the uh, growing the best corn. <coughs> so you know he went on winning for a couple of years. Then one day, a reporter came from the city to the village, and he wanted to interview the uh, farmer. What is it that made his corn the best? So while having a conversation with the uh, farmer, how he grew his corn and things like that, 
the reporter was shocked to know that the farmer was sharing his best corn seeds with his neighbors. So then the, the reporter asked, but how can you do it? How can you share your best corn seeds with your neighbors? The farmer was perplexed. Why is you know the reporter asking such a silly question? He said, of course, I need to sh uh, share these best quality seeds with my neighbor. But why is the question that the reporter asked? So he said, if I give the best quality seeds to my neighbor, they will grow the best corn plant out of the best seed. When the wind blows, the pollens from these corn plants, which I cannot control, will come to my fields. They will pollinate my corn. Hence, I will grow the best quality corn. So the best quality seed is going to give you the best quality plant. The best quality plant is going to give best quality pollens. These pollens are going to fly and come to my field and pollinate my corn. Hence, I will get the best corn. Hearing this, uh, the reporter was, you know, public zap. I never thought like that. But this just goes to show how connected the farmer was with his world around. He knew that if he does not share knowledge, he is not going to win. So sharing knowledge is the most important thing that we can do. Each one of us have a skill set which is different than the person sitting left, right or front, back of you. You may have a skill set that your immediate neighbor or friend or family won't have or your father won't have or your boss won't have or your junior won't have in the world outside. So it's very critical to share knowledge. If we want to succeed in our profession, we must help our team with the knowledge that we have acquired over the years. It is also possible, you know, uh, to, to share our wealth and become rich. <coughs> Not rich, rich as financially rich. There are some people, you must have heard of uh, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. They are world's largest corporate donors. You must have heard of Warren Buffet, who is the biggest investor in the world, probably the second most richest man in the world. He donates every year, he donates portions of his wealth every year. Does it make him any less richer? He is still the second most richest person. He is not losing his position. So sometimes, you know, giving away something that you have, maybe in terms of money also, is not going to make you lose. But sometimes, holding too tight with what you have might make you lose. Suppose you are share, investing in the share market. You have heavily invested in share A and suddenly something goes wrong with share A. And your valuation is say 100 crores. Something goes wrong. And you know half of the wealth is wiped out. You have 50 crores. You lost 50 crores holding too tight to a share. So it's always good to share what you have. Um, you know a liberal man, when he waters a plant, he waters others. By watering others, he is watering himself. I'm sure most of you would have heard it. It was very popular in the internet with the memes that come up in Facebook these days. So there was this boy, blind, of course, uh, who was sitting on the footsteps of a building with a hat put in front of him with chiller, some change, and a placard which said, I am blind, please help. Now he's sitting there, pa waiting, passing the day by, not making too much of money, barely making ends meet. Just then a man walked past. He came, threw a few change into the into his hat. Then he looked at the placard, picked it up, turned it around, scribbled something on the placard, put it back and went out. <coughs> the blind boy realized that once this man had given him change and written something on the placard and left, he was getting more money. You know, people were just giving much more money than what he would have ideally got on a normal day, on a even you know, better than average day. He wondered, what did the man scribble? What is it that he wrote that I am getting more money? So he, he was there, happy that he was getting the money. Towards the end of the day, he heard the footstep of the same man who had come in the morning. So he stopped the man and he said, Are you the man this morning who took my placard and wrote something? If yes, what did you write? The man said, the, bo the man who wrote in the boy's placard said, Oh, but I only wrote the truth. I only wrote the truth. I just wrote what you wrote, but in a different way. 
the beggar, the boy insisted, what did you write? He said, I wrote, today is a beautiful day and I cannot see it. So that comes to a critical question, you need to be creative. Being creative is very important. So it is, it is very important for 100% progress. For 100% progress, you might need 95, 98, 99, sometimes 100% perfection. But do not stop your progress for that extra 5% perfection. What we are looking for in the world outside is 100% progress. So you need to act fast with creative thinking. <coughs> the pound of butter is a story about a farmer uh, who on his farm grew, who on his farm had a lot of cattle like cows, buffaloes. So he obviously had milk. So with the milk he was making butter. And his neighbor, the baker, would buy a pound of butter each day from this farmer. So this went on for a couple of years. One fine day, the, the baker decided, you know, let me check if this farmer is cheating. Let me check if the pound of butter that he's selling to me is actually a pound of butter. So he weighed the pound of butter this morning and he found out to his dismay that the farmer was cheating him. He was not selling him a pound of butter. So what did the baker do? He went to a court, filed a case against the farmer. So the judge asked for the farmer to come to the court and asked the farmer, have you any measures at your place to measure if you are selling a pound of butter, any weighing scale, any devices that can, you know, that you check before, you know, selling this pound of butter to the baker and others? The farmer said, no, your honor, I do not have any scales or weights, nothing. Hearing this, the baker felt vindicated. Oh, I have won it, yes, done it. This guy is going to jail. But then what the farmer said turned the case on its head. He said, I have been buying a pound of bread each day from the baker. And I use his pound of bread as my weighing scale for the pound of butter. That I said. <laughs> right? So that comes to the critical question of tackling a situation really well. You need to be very tactful in the world outside. Every person is going to be different. Some people are going to be very difficult to handle. Some people are going to be easy to handle. Some customers will not just want to listen to what you are trying to sell. They will just want to tell what whatever they want to do. You need to be tactful. You know how to tackle a situation. You need to know how to tackle a person. So it is important to be tactful. So you need to share knowledge. You need to apply your common sense. You need to know how to handle difficult people, but keeping in mind you need to know. These things are going to greatly help you in the market outside. These things are also going to help you in making your businesses successful, making you successful, in turn making our country successful. Uh, all I can request is, in Nepal there are opportunities. If there are no opportunities, you need to create those opportunities. Because if, these, if those opportunities are not there for you, means somebody is doing it wrong, I am doing it wrong. I am not creating those opportunities for you. You need to create those opportunities for yourself and for others behind you.